Hello, hello. How is everyone doing this afternoon? I am so, so very happy to be here with you guys. Um, <clears throat> as Debbie mentioned, my name is Melissa Colazzo. I am a mother of two. Uh, my kids are seven and five, respectively. And I don't know if you're feeling anything like me, but I am ready for school to go back full time. Um, <laughs> In addition to that, I am a professional makeup artist. I have been working in the field since 2011, and I have a such a varied um, spectrum of experience within the field. I primarily am a beauty makeup artist. You will not see me doing any of the gory special effects. I leave that to my colleagues um, to, to fill those roles, but I do a lot as it relates to beauty and also education. Um, I live in Maryland, midway between DC and Baltimore. Those are my primary markets there. And for the past, um, I would say about five years, I've been really deep diving into the world of bridal. But in addition to that, I have done um, publications for international magazines, advertising work, e-commerce work, um, and as I mentioned, lots and lots of education, especially in the midst of the pandemic. This has been my big pivot point, it has been doing courses like this that allow me to speak to uh, makeup wearers all over the country and the world. So that's that's kind of been the beautiful thing about this transition. Um, but what we're going to be focusing on today has everything to do with the, the fundamentals of complexion. So we are going to be deep diving into skincare, what products you need, um, what your skincare routine should include. We're going to be talking about complexion. Um, so how to match your foundation appropriately, how to do corrective makeup, i.e. concealing. Um, and then we'll even discuss about creating dimension. So quote unquote contouring, um, but in a way that does not feel very um, heavy or insta glam as, as I like to call it. Um, this class is intended for people of all ages. Um, if you've got skin, then you're going to get something out of this class today for sure. Um, in addition to that, you, I'm going to be spotlighting the products that I personally use. This is literally the, the products that are in my makeup and skincare arsenal. Um, however, what you will learn today, you can take with you into and apply it to any brand that you like to wear. So whether it's a drugstore brand or if you like to go to a particular counter in a department store, if you are an Ulta or Sephora shopper, you will be able to take the information that you learned from today's class and apply it to whatever your favorite brand is. Um, it's more so about getting a better assessment of what your personal needs are and how to address any concerns that you have with your skincare routine and how to apply your makeup. Um, this is a workshop class, so feel free, whether you're watching the recording or watching live, feel free to follow along. If you are with me right now, feel free to take your, um, to, you know, come off of uh, the video share um, and allow me to see you if you're comfortable um, and follow along with me. Or if you do not feel comfortable doing that, feel free to take lots and lots of notes. In the chat, I have put a link to my basic link tree because I often get questions about what was that brush you used? What was that skincare product that you used? Um, and because I know it's coming, I have gone ahead and created a link tree and um, I will let the ladies um, for the, whoever's watching the recording, um, we will make sure to provide that those links to you as well. So without further ado, shall we get started? If you have any questions, my ladies who are here live, please feel free to take yourselves off mute or throw your questions in the chat. I'm pretty good at multitasking. All right. Um, I am, uh, as I mentioned, an educator with makeup and skincare. I have a couple of brands that I absolutely adore. Um, and the reason for that is because they are all natural skincare brands. So we are starting with skincare because good makeup starts with good skin. If you have good skin, you don't have to wear as much makeup <laughs> unless that is your jam. Um, makeup is subjective. Everybody has different skincare needs and everybody has different skincare tastes. Um, 
skincare and makeup changes so much depending on trends, depending on how much um, technology has evolved over the span of time. I, I can tell you in the last 10 years, the amount of amazing science that has gone into the creation and formulation of skincare and makeup has changed so much and it will continue to because this is big business. But with that being said, this is a business. So a lot of brands are out there to try and sell you more and more and more and more. How many different products can we get you to put on your shelf? I am a makeup minimalist personally and as a professional artist. That's why I get hired is because I can make skin look good in a minimal fashion, right? So that is what I love to impart to my everyday people who love to wear makeup, right? Um, you don't have to pound on a million products, number one. Number two, you do not have to do everything that you're... Um, that the makeup brands tell you to do. So this brush, I can teach you how to use this brush in 500 different ways, even though it's technically a buffer brush. They're gonna tell you it's just for this part of the face, when in reality, I can show you how to use this brush in a million different ways, right? Um, we can take a concealing product and I can show you how to use that product in multiple different ways um, because a big, tenant of what I love to do is to teach you how to do more with less, how multi-use products and tools save you time and save you money. And when you're buying good quality, you don't have to use as much, which means it lasts you longer, right? Let's get, let's get products that last you at least six months to a year so that you're not having to consistently rebuy and rebuy and rebuy. And you're not having to consistently fight with a product that's not really serving you. Okay, so if you have your makeup bags with you, if you have your brushes with you, open them up. Um, we'll talk a little bit about your skincare routine right now. Um, and we can take this time to assess whether or not the things that you currently have in your bag are serving you. And if not, we can say goodbye and get exactly what it is that you need so that you are feeling great and empowered. Um, I am a proponent of, of uh, saying that makeup and skincare are meant to reveal, not conceal, right? We want to look good and feel good in our own skin and not feel like we are a completely different person when we are looking at ourselves in the mirror, right? All right. So let's start with prepping the skin. As I mentioned a few minutes ago, um, your good skin equals good makeup. Good skin means less makeup. So if that is your goal, then focusing your time and your money on your skin prep steps and your foundation steps are going to be what you want to focus your time and money on. Okay. So let me know in the chat or by raising your hand, if you are the type of person that has a bit more of a drier skin, meaning that after you wash your face and you were to let it dry naturally, it would feel kind of tight around the mouth and on the cheeks. Yes, that is very tra uh, traditional, especially as we age, our, t our skin tends to get drier and drier. Um, if you're more of an oily skin type, meaning that when you wash your face, if you were let it to dry naturally, you might see that you're going to have a buildup of sebum, aka oil, through maybe your T-zone or on your cheeks. All right. So for my oily skins, yes, I see you. Uh, for my more oily skins, you have a natural preservative to your skin, my friend. I know that fighting oil is a struggle, but honestly, that is probably one of the best things that you can have um, over the longevity of your life. Oily skin means that it's going to remain supple and youthful, and that's kind of what we're all going for in the end. Skincare is meant to bring our skin to a place of balance. So as you choose skincare, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're choosing something that's going to serve you. So if you are a drier skin type, we are boosting that hydration and that water content and bringing the skin to a place of balance. For my oily skin types, we are finding ways to control the oil in a way that isn't stripping our skin and producing more oil and finding that place of balance. All right, so everyone's skincare routine should include, feel free to start taking notes here, my friends. Uh, everyone's skincare routine should include a cleansing step, and we'll talk about something called a double cleanse here in a moment. After you've cleansed the skin, there should be a treatment step, which is when we are addressing concerns 
things like fine lines, dark circles, if you enjoy putting on a skin mask, if you like, ex everyone should be exfoliating. That's when that step pl takes place. And we're gonna deep dive into all of these subjects here in a moment. Followed up by your moisturizer, which is an occlusive. An occlusive means it's a, it creates a barrier, it seals everything. So you wanna clean the skin, treat the skin, and then seal it all up with all of that moisture, moisture-y goodness. I like to make up words. So, all right. So unlike makeup, skincare is meant to be absorbed by the skin. It is absorbed into the dermis. That's why I talked about my favorite skin brands being more on the natural side. And that's not to say that chemical is bad and natural is all good because that is definitely not the case. Um, but because it's meant to be absorbed by your skin, we wanna make sure that it's going to be free of any harmful chemicals, things that have known to be carcinogens over time. So if we remember some of our, you know, old legacy brands that we find in the, in the drugstores, I'll go ahead and say it, things like Pons and Oil of Olay, the, um, I mentioned that the, the chemistry that has gone into creating skincare and makeup has evolved so much that we found that some of those older legacy brands have ingredients in them that are a bit more carcinogenic that is aren't great for absorption into the body. That's why natural skincare is such a huge thing. Things like natural deodorants and natural toothpaste and all of that stuff because you are literally ingesting them into your body. Whereas makeup sits on top of the skin, right? Uh, aside from it causing a little breakout or something like that, we don't have to worry as much about, again, this is my caveat, if you love wearing all natural everything, great. Um, but makeup for me is not as big of a concern because it lives on top of the skin and I'm washing it off every night. Does that make sense? All right, so for my more dry skinned ladies, you want to be making sure that you are grabbing a cleanser that is going to provide um, more moisture content and it's not going to strip the skin as much so if you that what, what I'm referring to there are your milky cleansers that do not foam milky cleansers that don't create bubbles okay whereas my oily skins they probably need a little bit more of a detergent action to get rid of some of that surface oil the excess oil without stripping the skin as well um, so that's when you're going to be um, grabbing or reaching for one of those more foaming cleansers. Okay. Now, I talked about stripping the skin. Again, a lot of our legacy brands and a lot, not all of the drugstore brands, but a lot of them are meant to strip the skin down all the way so that you're then having to replenish the skin through your treatment step, through your moisturizers, through all of that stuff. If you can find a brand that is pH balanced, that's the word you're looking for, pH balanced, meaning that we're trying to maintain a certain environment on our skin. There's something called the acid mantle of the skin that we're trying to not disturb because we wanna make sure that we are not taking the skin to a place where bacteria can grow because that's how we get you know, weird breakouts and weird skin conditions, right? Um, so if you're using something that's pH balanced, it's never going to throw your skin out of whack and force you to have to buy a bunch of extra things to bring the skin back into a place of balance, okay? So as you're looking for your cleansers particularly, you wanna make sure that it's nice and gentle, okay? There's something else that I like to discuss um, and it's called a double cleanse. A double cleanse is kind of a new term that's being kicked around. And what that's basically referring to is cleaning the skin twice, meaning that, if, especially if you are a makeup wearer, if you wear makeup often, you want to make sure that you are taking off the makeup before you are actually doing the job of cleaning the skin. The analogy I like to make is if you are cleaning your house, you wanna make sure you sweep the floor before you mop it right? Because otherwise you're just pushing dirt around with the mop. So it's the same thing. So your double cleanse can literally mean washing your face twice, one time to get the surface, SPF, makeup, sunscreen, you know, whatever you're putting on your skin. Or if you spend a lot of time outside, you want to get all of those sort of environmental factors and things off of your face before you can actually do the job of cleaning the skin. Um, another great uh, product that can be used for a double cleanse is a makeup wipe if you're into that, or even like a makeup removal cloth if you're trying to be a bit more environmentally friendly. 
and not use disposable wipes. Um, it can be, um, I love a product that I sell called Make Off Spray. It's a spray that you spray on your face. You let it sit for about 10 seconds and then you begin to rub and it takes all of that waterproof makeup off and things like that. And then you wipe that down and wash the face. Okay. So in essence, you guys get it. Washing the face two times is definitely going to be beneficial to you, right? Um, now our skin is clean. We're feeling good. And now we're going to get into our treatment phases, steps. Um, if you remember having dial up internet in your home, then you need a treatment in your skincare routine, <laughs> okay? So that's where I'm talking about things like eye creams, things like face masks. Where's my favorite? There it is, my skin polish face mask. This is one that you apply, oops, there's a lid on there. Apply it, let it sit for about 20 minutes, rinse it off, and then you've done the job of exfoliating the skin as well as hydrating the skin. Um, another favorite that I have are things like serums. So a serum is meant to be, um, it's typically thinner than a moisturizer and will do the job of lightening, tightening, brightening the skin, right? helping with fine lines and wrinkles, things of that nature. Um, I should be demoing this. So let me let me do a quick demo. I haven't, I washed my face before we started, so it's feeling a little bit dry. I have dehydrated skin, meaning that it requires a lot of moisture. And if I don't give it the moisture that it needs, then it over creates uh, oil. So that's how my skin reacts. Um, to things like that. A lot of people who are tend to be oily are actually more than likely dehydrated. So your skin is actually quite dry and then it responds to the dryness by overproducing oil. So again, finding that balance is going to be key. Um, so I have washed my face and now I'm going to go ahead and put on my serum. This is a very lightweight serum. Um, you can see it just goes right into the skin. And this one is all natural, as I mentioned. It uses the benefit of shoji, uh, uh, sanji, excuse me, sanji mushroom, Japanese mushroom. Um, definitely want to Google that and look that up because the benefits are many. Um, S O N G Y I. Um, so what I do is I mixed it with an oil. Anybody uh, ever use a face oil before? Face oils are, yes, so Deborah has her hands raised. Amazing. So face oil are newer to the scene. The European and Japanese uh, Asian markets have been using face oils for some time. It's kind of newer, a newer concept in the American markets. And face oils make people feel a little bit uncomfortable, right? Why, why am I introducing more oil to my face? Um, especially if you are an oily skin type. Face oils are so incredible. And we're not talking about, you know, your coconut oils. Remember a few years ago, coconut oil, everybody was using it everywhere on everything. Um, we're talking about oils that are truly meant to be absorbed by the skin because the molecular size is so small that it will go further down into the dermis. So this is what they call a carrier oil. This one is uh, Pomifera. It's a single ingredient oil. It's made in the US. Um, which is amazing. It's like I've hedge balls from <laughs> from Utah or something like that, Iowa, I believe. Um, and the reason why this is such a benefit is because the molecular size of this oil is so tiny that when you mix it with something like your serum, which is meant to make to really do a lot of work, lighten, tighten, brighten the skin, texture, things like that, it will take it and drive it deeper into the skin, making it more effective. This oil is also loaded with omegas, omega-6 to be um, exact, and it also has all the antis, antibacterial, antifungal, antimicrobe, all of those things. It boosts cell turnover. So that is a great um, product to have even in like your first aid kit because if you get a cut, if you get a burn, you apply that and again, it drives down deeper into the skin to boost cell turnover. So you're gonna heal faster. Things like that. So if you're, if you're, um, I love the, I had a friend that used it on a burn from when she was flat ironing her hair or drying her hair. Um, she got a little burn on her neck, put a little of that pomifera oil on it and it was gone in a matter of days. So 
what you're seeing me do is press the product into the skin. I warmed it up with my hands. And when you're applying your skincare treatments, when you're applying your moisturizers, you wanna use the heat that is naturally derived from your body to help push some of that product into place. Holding it there for a few seconds and moving it around. Naturally, when we have a little bit of extra product on our hands, what you can do is you can bring it down to your decollete. These are some of the areas of the, the face and the body that we tend to forget about. And, you know, our necks show age really quickly, our chest shows age, and then also our hands. So take whatever's left over and bring it into those spaces and you're going to feel beautiful and silky and smooth and buttery and delicious. Yes. And again, if you have any questions, please feel free to jump off mute, interrupt me at any time because no question is silly. If you have a question, someone else is going to have a question about it too. So that is my skin treatment moment. I also am a person who sort of struggles with under eye texture as well as discoloration. Okay. And we'll talk about how to cover that in our, when we talk about foundation and in that moment. Um, but we got to attack it in from two fronts, right? <laughs> so we're, we're attacking it with the skincare first. Um, I use a product called nourishing eye cream by B3 bomb. Um, Julia Dalton brush, fabulous makeup artist who created this brand. She is also a New Yorker and she is, I mean, talk about female owned, businesses that are worth the time and, and the money to support, I 100% um, love everything that she creates. So this is a nourishing whipped eye cream. Um, I also carry a serum, an eye serum, which I do not use all the time, but this one is by Lime Life by Alcone. It's called I Arise. It's got aspen bark and carob. And what this does is it will, this is great for puffiness. So if you ha are a person who suffers from puffy eyes, finding yourself a serum is going to be really fantastic. You put this on, it activates with a little bit of water so you can sort of spray um, your face a bit. And in about five minutes, that puffiness goes and it's gone. I don't know how it works, it's like magic. So what I'm doing is I'm using my ring finger, which is the finger on your hand that delivers the light, least amount of pressure. You don't want to rub, especially this area of the face has such thin skin, like tissue paper. You want to make sure that you're being very, very gentle in this orbital area, especially this time of year. We're all suffering from allergies. I know my eyes itch like crazy. So being very careful with how rough you're um, scratching and doing things like that, because um, darkness can also come from friction. So if you're a chronic sort of eye scratcher, you can also get dark circles around the eye just from just all that friction. So just be very, very careful around the skin on your eyes. Um, this takes me to a very good point. The eye, skin around the eyes, very, very thin, like tissue paper. Skin on the face, a little bit thicker, like, like the paper that we write on. Skin on the body, cardboard, especially around the elbows, knees, heels. So if you're a person who doesn't have a big skincare routine and you're just like, oh, let me just grab whatever soap I have. I use whatever soap on my body on my face. It's going to be do detergent. And we talked about what super detergent skincare does to your face, brings it out of balance. We want to make sure that you're using skincare that's going to keep things nice and in balance. I see lots of heads nodding, so I know that you're with me. Beautiful. No judgment if you did not know that until now. Now you know. <laughs> Friendly neighborhood makeup artist here to help you out. All right. Uh, so we've cleansed, we've treated, and now we're going to moisturize. So again, the moisturizer is meant to seal things off. You can use a couple of different things for moisturizer. I, I have two. Um, again, finding the moisturizer that is meant for your skin type. Super important. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna bring this up to the camera. Hopefully you guys can see. This is a gel-based moisturizer. So this is meant for my more sensitive skinned ladies, for my more oily skinned ladies, because you see how that just completely disappeared onto my hand? Perfect. For my drier skins, we have something thicker. We have something creamier, more emollient. 
So it takes a little bit more work to get that push down into the skin, but it's going to create that richness, right? So you can definitely tell the difference between what I put here and what I put there. This is going to take a moment. It's almost like a little bit of a sunscreen in thickness, but whenever you're shopping for your skincare, that's, those are sort of the things that you're looking for. My dry skin ladies, rich, emollient, heavier. My oily skin ladies, gel, lightweight, quick absorbing. Those are some of the words you're looking for, okay? Um, I didn't talk about toner. Does anybody use a toner? Do, do we remember like Sea Breeze from the 80s and 90s? We remember Sea Breeze, right? So that stuff was basically like al straight alcohol in a bottle, okay? <laughs> what are you saying, Deborah? You can take yourself off mute. <laughs> It burned, but she's like, it must be working. It's, it's working good. because my flesh is on fire. <laughs> it's stripping everything out of your everything out of your body, practically. There it is. There it is. And sadly, some of those those products still exist. You know, I think of my um, my teenage niece who brought out this astringent by Clean and Clear, and I was like, ah, don't use it. Um, I love a witch hazel. Some women love using witch hazel. So a toner step goes before your treatments. So you've cleansed your skin and you can use a little toner on the skin just to like finish off the process of cleaning the skin. And it sort of prepares your skin to receive whatever treatment you're putting on next. I don't feel like I need a toner as much because I'm using all natural skincare that I know is effective, right? Skincare that is natural, but effective at treating what I need to be treated. What's your question, Deborah? Would you consider that like, your second cleaning or not? Because like I use one in the shower, like I use a, a, a foaming, you know, like to clean yeah. the mm -hmm. first round. And then when I get out, I use the, like a pump that is very, very, very light. light. Yes. And then it does the next step. And then yeah. I can still see like it's taking off the last residuals that I have and yeah. it tones it. And That's then I start double cleanse. You're already okay. doing it. Good job. Thanks that so. is a double cleanse. So yeah, you can use something like a facial toner. This one is rose hydrosol, witch hazel, distilled water, peppermint hydrosol. You know, that's a great one. Um, another popular brand that is quite inexpensive you can find um, is Mario Badescu. It's a facial spray with uh, aloe. Oh yeah, Kat's got hers. Yeah. Um, this is the rose one. The one that Kat has is the, the cucumber. It comes in a different, a couple different formulations. So if you have a floral allergy, you know, this is not going to be your one. You're going to want to get the one that Kat has. Um, but these are great for a double cleanse as well. These I also like using um, because, again, I have dehydrated skin. So if I were to use a, foamy, a heavier foaming cleanser twice a day, it would be too much. My skin would get dried out. So I focus my skincare routine at night, okay? So if you're the type of person who does not wanna wash their face twice a day necessarily, focus your skincare routine at nighttime because you're taking off the day, you're putting all that good stuff onto your skin and then you're going to sleep for hopefully eight hours <laughs> um, and getting that good, you know, maybe five, may somewhere between five and eight. Um, but you're letting that good stuff sit on your skin overnight and do its work, okay? You can use the same skincare routine at during the day as you do at night, if you wish, or you can purchase products that are meant for nighttime. This is a midnight oil um, cleanser. This is an oil cleanser. So in lieu of using something that's heavy and foaming, this is quite literally a, an oil that will do the job of removing makeup. Let me give you a little better of a pump. It will remove makeup and it will um, sit on the skin. Once you've, uh, you wet your hands, you emulsify it a little bit and it creates like a milky cleanse. And then you take a towel and you just sort of dab off the excess. And then you leave that really beautiful facial oil on the skin to sit overnight. And this creates, this is great for both oily and dry skins. Why is oil good for oily skin? Anybody know? Oil is good for oily skin because you are, ooh, sorry, my phone just decided to get really loud. Um, because you are fighting like with like. Sometimes oil and water don't mix, right? And sometimes water is not enough to get the skin cleansed and to strip that oil down to a, a better, more balanced place. So what happens is when you introduce oil on oily skin, it um, 
sort of tricks the brain into thinking it has all the oil that it needs. I do not need to produce any more oil. Super important for me as a dehydrated person, do the oil. My skin now knows it doesn't need any more. That makes sense? So another option for a moisturizer is to do an oil. You can mix oil into your moisturizer if you wish. I've got one called Due Date Oil, which is a um, Pomerosa and Sunflower, so it's really lightweight. And oil acts, again, like a barrier, like an occlusive. It's gonna lock everything into place. So same sort of thing. Press that oil with my hands. Push it into place. And then give it a little rub and scrub. Um, does anyone, let's talk for a minute about acne. Um, a good skincare routine is going to help, help keep acne at bay. This is especially important for my teenage friends who might be watching. Um, but when you have an acne flare up, using a product that has maybe clay and tea tree, if we're talking about natural products, are going to help pull everything to the surface. And of course, you know, it gets darker before it gets lighter. So sometimes when you're pulling, when you're doing new skincare routines, you might have a little flare because, you know, your skin is adjusting. You've got to give yourself maybe like two weeks or so when you're trying a new skincare routine. Um, unless you know that you're having a reaction, you're burning, something like that, then, you know, let things go right away if that is the case. But oftentimes women or anyone who uses skincare will try a new routine and then off after the first one or two times of using it saying, oh, I got a breakout. Uh, well, that's good because your skincare is working. It's pulling everything out. Um, so you kind of have to trust the process when you're trying any kind of a new skincare. Um, so again, I love a tea tree or a clay on a breakout. I love to put it on at night. So if I have a little hormonal acne moment, I take a clay mask that has tree tea tree in it as well. I put it on that breakout, I go to bed, I wake up, I wipe it off, it's dry. That pimple is dry. Um, another thing that I like to use, when, especially if it's really, if you've got that cystic acne that's really big under the skin, kind of painful, this is another Mario Badescu brand. You can find this at Ulta, Sephora. It's a drying lotion. This is a little bit, um, more of a classical approach because this is literally like calamine lotion with some with some um what is it it's alcohol so you don't want to use this all the time you want to use this on the really big nasty suckers that really that are big and juicy and need to get dried out from the inside out so you just dip a cotton swab into there and you place it on the breakout wherever it is and you leave it alone go to bed wake up in the morning it's dry okay so again, this is, a, this is an example of not all chemical is bad uh, and not all natural is good. Um, I don't know if you guys have any extra questions about things like AHAs. I mean, you can go so deep into skincare. I mean, I have all sorts of lotions and potions. Um, otherwise, we're going to keep it kind of simple because <laughs> I don't want to overwhelm. And we can certainly do a follow-up class. Um, I'd be happy happy to do that for you. Um, the one last thing that I will mention is exfoliation, okay? You want to exfoliate your skin a couple times a week. Some people are more, um, are more uh, what's the word, sensitive to over exfoliation. And some people can do a lot more. You don't want to do it, you know, every day. Do not exfoliate your skin every day, my friends. Please don't because you need to give your skin time to heal, to regenerate, to, to, to get good again. <laughs> um, but if you find that your makeup doesn't sit right or that you feel roughness, particularly like in areas around the nose where dead skin cell tends to, to build up around the mouth, some people can see it sort of through their cheeks or on their through their eyebrows where your hair grows. Exfoliation is going to help slough off dead skin cells from the surface of the skin, okay? getting in there and a physical exfoliant is uh let's make sure that we're using good exfoliants do you remember saint ives apricot scrub we're not using apricot scrub anymore my friend that is for the cardboard areas of our bodies not for the tissue paper areas of our bodies so when you're choosing an ex a physical exfoliator you want to find something that has beads in it i the one that i use um i held it up just a moment ago it's the skin polish it's citrus. 
uh, lemon peel and jojoba. The beads are made out of jojoba oil. So that's good for you, also good for the environment. Because micro beads, when they first started making micro beads, they made them out of plastic. And then those get washed down the drain and into our water sources and then ultimately into our food sources and then back into our bodies. We wanna make sure that we're being healthy, not only for ourselves, but for mother nature. Um, so as you choose an exfoliant, make sure that whatever they're using, whatever bead they're using, it's something that is natural and not made out of plastic, okay? This does this product does the job of both physical exfoliation through the jojoba beads and the scrubbing action, but the lemon peel, if you've ever used an all natural cleaner in your home, like a, something that uses a citrus oil, a citrus enzyme to clean your house, it's the same sort of thing. So you're using, technically it's a chemical because you're having a bit of a chemical reaction, um, but it's, it's natural. It's sort of like the marriage between chemical and natural. It's gentle enough to give you a little bit of hydration as well. So finding tools that do multiple jobs. Again, I talk a lot about multiple uses, things that are meant to do more than one thing. So this is probably one of my favorite products um, from Lime Life when it comes to particularly like helping with the texture of the skin because it's gonna hydrate and exfoliate and do all sorts of stuff. Okay, I think I've beaten that dead horse of skincare all the way down to the ground. Um, I didn't talk too much about tools, but if we've seen these before, a jade roller, this one's quite literally jade, this, once you have your skincare in, you can use this to sort of press this product into the skin even further. And what this also does is facilitate drainage of the lymph nodes and things like that. So all I like to do is make sure that when you're rolling this on the skin, I'm doing it very lightly. You can really push it in there. Um, but you wanna make sure that you're facilitating sort of the upward lift of the face. So you don't wanna go this way. You wanna go up and towards the hairline because we're trying to lift it all, right? So this is a great tool, pretty inexpensive. You can find these at Marshalls, DJ Maxx, anywhere these days. Um, uh, if we're going a little bit fancier, <laughs> uh, I have this guy. This is a like ultrasonic light therapy wand. <laughs> so it has multiple functions. Um, this one, you can put a cotton round on it and put your toner on it and clean the face. And if you listen, do you hear that? So it's got a microcurrent. So what the, you do, you would use it the same way that I did the jade roller. This will clean the skin. It has a photo rejuvenation with red light. So light therapy is something that has been tested and proven to help with the texture of the skin, absorption of product, things like that. Um, firming and lifting with blue light therapy. And then eye care with a light therapy option as well. Something out there for everyone. This is definitely a bit more advanced if you're into skincare. If not, again, the rule, cleanse, treat, moisturize. If you have those things, then I am a happy gal. All right, my friends, let's get into the, what we're here for. And that's how to create a beautiful complexion. I've let my skincare sit on my face for quite a while. So we can already start to see some of the glow coming through the skin. I like to do my skincare routine and then brush my teeth and then get dressed and then maybe do my hair and then do my makeup because that has given my face enough time to really absorb all the goodness that I've put on it, and it's not gonna fight with my makeup. If you do all your skincare, especially if you like using a face oil, and then you go right into doing your makeup, oftentimes you haven't given the product enough time to absorb into the skin, and it might fight with what you're putting on top of it, okay? So give yourself some time to let that skincare absorb and do its thing. Oh, the last skincare thing you wanna do between Prep and makeup, SPF. SPF for everyone, every day, no matter what. I am, uh, excuse me, grabbing my SPF. This one is by Lime Life by Alcone. It's a SPF 30. It's a face sunscreen. It's all natural, no chemicals, 
No chemicals in your sunscreen, my friend, not only for you, but also for the environment as well. Um, and this acts as a, as a primer. So if you're planning to wear sunscreen and you are a makeup wearer, you wanna find something that will um, absorb into the skin. And I like to think of primer as like double stick tape, right? So it, it creates a barrier between yourself and the makeup and it also attaches to the makeup so it lasts longer. Um, primers are helpful for if you have larger pores, if you have fine lines, it just smooths the skin, right? Oftentimes you can find products like BB creams or CC creams that already have the SPF built in. Um, if that is your jam, go for it. Keep, go, keep doing that. As a pro makeup artist, I like to have a little bit more control of what I'm using, if that makes sense. Because a lot of times if you have a product that is a foundation product, a complexion product, and it has too much, too many things in it, it will mess with the formula. Because remember, these companies are here to try and sell you stuff, right? So if I put in big letters that I have this and I have that benefit and this benefit and that benefit, it, it's great. You're going to sell a lot of products, but you might end up selling a product that does not do what you want it to do. So if you put too much stuff into those foundations, have you ever put on a foundation and then gone out into your car in the natural light and looked at yourself and said, ah, this is the wrong color or it changed colors on me. What happened? Because it oxidizes and there's too much stuff in the formula. They threw too many things in there. And now the formula of the foundation is doing funny stuff. Okay. So that being said, I like to do my SPF separately and let SPF be sep let SPF be SPF, let foundation be foundation. I don't need all the things wrapped into one, but that's personal preference. All right. So, um, so I have a quick question. Yes. In the past, I've had problems over multiple years and I've tried so many different SPFs. Yes. And they have a tendency to make me break out and I've, I've stuck it out. Like I'm like, oh, my body's getting used to it. Right. And then like three weeks later, I'm still having like, so I've changed different ones over the years and I've <clears throat> separately bought like foundation that had it and, and it's right. still the same thing. So I've did the best. Like I, I try to wear it every day, but most of the time it's like, I'm definitely going to be out in the sun that I put it, but right. I know what the consequence is. I mean, is it because I'm maybe the brand is just too heavy what is it it could be it could be if you're buying a face spf that's not meant to be uh that's not meant to play well with makeup yeah you know, because you want to make sure you're getting someone that is meant to play well with makeup so lime life has a great one super goop is another great one you can also i think you can also find spfs that are in powder form as well so you would put your makeup on and then do a dust of that mm -hmm. over top and i recently bought one but i haven't tried it yet but it's like even like a spray mist that goes right. on like so I'm gonna try that that's my next thing because I was I, I got tired of the other ones just yes. counteractively doing everything I'm not supposed to do and I do have a tendency to have like um the hormonal like patches and stuff yes. which I've worked hard to like lighten and, mm -hmm. and then so I'm trying to keep the sun off of them but I was gonna ask that question but thank absolutely. you absolutely yeah yeah and it's one of those things like makeup and skincare is hard you you uh can the SPF be used if I don't wear makeup only moisture yes yes, yes. Absolutely. SPF all the time, whether you're wearing makeup or not every day. Yeah. Because uh, Sunday. Don't forget your neck because I like a lot of people forget to put the SPS on their yeah. neck and then it's like you have a wrinkly neck. You're trying to avoid the wrinkles yeah. here. I mean, there's that. And then also sun, you know, skin cancer is real friends. So yeah. let's make sure that we're, we're keeping ourselves healthy. Um, <clears throat> oh, to uh, Debbie's point, as you are out there and you're trying new products, a lot of people don't know this and it's surprising. You can take things back. If you have purchased a foundation, a makeup, a skincare or whatever, and you don't like it, you don't even have to excuse, have an excuse. You can just say, I don't like it, or I broke out from it, or I didn't, I had a reaction to it. You can take it back to the store. They have to take it back. Okay. A lot of times we think that because I've used it on my face, I can't return it. Absolutely not take it back. I didn't like it. Give me something else or give me my money back. Always. Since it's not chemical, it's a physical block type. Uh, yeah, absolutely. 
Yeah, so even if you're not wearing makeup, only moisturizer, yes. Skincare is going to be the last step of your skincare skin prep routine, no matter what. I need to make sure I'm getting in the practice of wearing SPF every day. I am my worst client. I am my own worst client when it comes to that sort of thing. Um, but yes, um, SPF every day. If you want to see the longevity of the health of your skin, SPF every day. All right. Friends, let's talk really quickly about tools and then we'll get to the job of actually putting makeup on. I don't want to keep you here all day. So, uh, my general rule about tools is to just get to know them. So this and this and this. All three very different tools. All three for foundation. Okay, so why am I choosing one product over the other, one tool over the other. It depends on what my end result is. Okay. So taking these two, this brush, you can see how big and fluffy and soft the bristles are. Whereas this one is very tightly packed, densely packed bristles, a little bit less give to them, a little bit firmer. If I am looking for a soft and gentle and light-handed foundation, I'm not gonna pick this brush with the tightly packed bristles. You wanna make sure that you're choosing the tool that is gonna be most beneficial to you in the end. So if you want more of a sheer coverage, not nothing more than a medium coverage, you wanna find something that is nice and soft and fluffy and that moves and flows with the skin that buffs this is called a buffing motion. Whereas this foundation brush is meant to be more painterly. You're going to paint the, the product onto your skin, right? So it's going to apply things more in more of a medium to full coverage. So depending on what, nothing, no brush is better than the other. It just depends on what your end result is going to be, what you want it to be. So choose accordingly. This is called a reusable foundation sponge. This is meant to be used wet. So if you own one of these and you're using it dry, you are not getting the full benefit of the tool. It's going to absorb your product because it's a sponge. So fill the sponge with something else, i.e. water. <laughs> Squeeze it out until it's just lightly damp. And then what this does is creates a really beautiful sort of sheer to medium coverage with this and it creates a more um, flawless finish. Because of the, the way that the, the sponge is created, it's meant to mimic pores. So you can press and roll and really push the product into the skin, blend things out. Um, depending on what I'm feeling and what my end result is, this is probably one of my most favorite to grab, but I will use all three of these just depending on what's happening that day, what's clean. <laughs> that particular day um, and what I'm looking to create. Um, when it comes to cleaning your brushes, please clean them often. This sponge I will wash before each time that I do my makeup. The reason for that is because I have to wet it anyways. So if I'm at the sink getting it wet, I might as well clean it. Um, with these guys, you want to shampoo your brushes just like you would your hair. Right, so once a week at least, please, or at minimum once a month, if you're not a big makeup wearer, it depends on how much you're using them, right? Um, I use, you can use something like a baby shampoo, a very mild natural soap, like a Dr. Bronner's Castile soap, or something to that effect. You'll, I like to place a little bit of soap on my hand. I will swirl the brush into the bristles just in the same way that I would use the brush squeeze it under the sink and you can start seeing sort of the foundation and all the color come out of it. Once it runs clear, I sort of give it a couple wax and then I lay the, the brush off of the side of a counter like this to allow the air to circulate all the way around the brush. And then I just leave it overnight. So this is something that I do at night, let it sit. And then when I wake up in the morning, I just have to give the brush a quick fluff and it's dry and ready to use, okay? As far as what types of brush brushes to choose, again, if you're looking for soft and fluffy makeup, you want to pick soft and fluffy brushes. 
Um, I also like to talk about the size of your brush in, rel in relation to your face. If you have a teeny tiny little face, you don't need a brush this big because you're gonna like, it's gonna take up half of your face and you're not, it's not gonna do what you want it to. Make sure that you're picking the size of a brush that is relative to the size of your face. Um, these types of brushes that are fluffy and domed are my absolute favorite for everything, okay? So I will have these brushes in multiple sizes to do multiple jobs. I can use this as a foundation brush. I can use this as a powder brush. I can use this to contour. I can use this for multiple things, right? Because it's really more about the shape of the brush more than what the brush is labeled to do, okay? Um, in my links that I put in the chat, I created a brush bundle for you. <laughs> It comes with, uh, I think, eight brushes, and it's everything that you need to create a makeup look regardless of what style of makeup you like to do. It's these eight brushes, um, and we'll talk, I'll walk you through them through the two classes, but with these eight brushes, you should be able to do everything that you absolutely need, and it's, uh, when I created the brush bundle, I was like, what do my, what do my students need more than anything? Brushes that are multi-use, multi-purpose, and these are it. All right, so if you have any specific questions about tools, please come up, come off of mute and do not be shy or afraid to ask. Um, I will say when you're choosing makeup brushes, they do not have to be expensive. The brands that I have here are by Royal and Langnickel. I have brushes that are quite inexpensive. This is probably like a four or $5 brush and the link is in my link tree. Um, but if you treat your brushes well, they'll last you a lifetime, okay? I prefer a synthetic brush to a uh, all natural brush because natural brushes are just more fussy. Um, also, you know, if you are an animal lover and want to support um, the, the not using animal hair, then synthetic is the way to go. Back in the day, synthetic brushes used to be garbage. There the, used to be the little black brushes that came in your, you know, blush and it scratched yeah. your face when you put it on. Um, now, synthetic brushes are just as good and in my opinion, sometimes better than natural hair brushes. Yes, ma'am. Good question. So um, before you go on to the foundation, I yes. wanted to touch upon, maybe you could tell us a little bit about, about facial hair removal because mm -hmm. whether you're younger and you're starting to get a little like mustache or you're getting older and you're getting whiskers or just in general, you just have a type of a, you know, fuzzy face or whatever. And I found with some of my friends that they found that very complicated and frustrating because they can't get there. And I tell them, it's like, have you ever, you know, like removed some of your facial hair? That's why you can't get a, a food. And they're like, I was wondering how you get like a smooth, I'm like, well, I mean, I'm not like, officially like a hairy face but I mean as you get older and your hormones change or if you're younger and you're you know you start to get a mustache yeah they, people are like oh I'm just gonna get a, a bleach or I'm gonna and some of that stuff is harmful and it, they get a reaction I use flawless which is a little you know because I don't want to put anything extra on my face but yes. and again maybe you could tell us a little bit about that yes okay great question I do not normally bring this up unless someone asks because it's scary right I am a fan of a face shave personally. The reason for that. Yep, yeah, exactly. I am pro face shaving, um, not for all the types of hair, right? So just like we have different types of skin thicknesses on our face, we also have different types of hair. The hair on our head is not the same as the hair on our eyebrows, is the same as our arms, right? So the hair of Deborah that you're talking about is called vellus hair. So there are women, I'm sure we all know someone, or it might be you, that has all these teeny tiny little peach fuzz is what we know it as, right? That type of hair can be easily removed by what's called um, dermaplaning, aka face shaving, right? There is a misconception out there that if I shave my face, the hair is gonna grow back thicker. That vellus hair will never get thicker. You're not gonna get a men's beard out of that. Now, the caveat to that is that we do have hairs on our faces that need to be tweezed, right? So we know I get them through here, those thick billy goat hairs, right? Those we do not wanna shave. Those you wanna tweeze. And it's not that they're gonna get thicker, but when you shave them, they get blunt, 
right? Versus a hair that has a tapered end to it. Those hairs are gonna get blunt and they're more obvious when they've been shaved blunt, right? So it appears thicker, but really it's just the fact that you cut the hair off this way versus allowing the hair to taper out and grow naturally, right? So any of those hairs that you get, I get them sort of through my sideburns and then I get them, you know, right through here for me. I guess it's like hormone related. Those I tweeze and then I shave my hair with like a men's single razor blade, single blade razor. Yeah, and like men's shaving, uh, I use a shaving balm. So a creamy, not not something that foams up, you know, like a Barbasol or anything like that, because that's a lot of chemical. Um, I use a nice, uh, nice shaving balm, shave, shave, shave. And that does the job of removing that vellus hair and it exfoliates. Have you ever tried like the flawless or anything? Like I that? haven't tried the flawless. I'm, I keep saying I'm saving up to get a, um, Oh gosh, what is the name of it now? There's this like fancy dermaplaning. Uh, yeah, thing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, for those people that are scared, I mean, like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna shave my face. Yeah. I mean, I have one of these, and it's right. light, you know, and it's easy to use. It doesn't hurt. It's just mm -hmm. you know, you're, you can go fast. You don't have to be worrying about yes. my face. Yeah. So it's really quick, especially if you just have like a little mustache. And I I, I like to use it better than yep. you know, chemical or waxing. Yeah, and stuff for sure. Like that. Yeah, that's why I use like a men's single razor, uh, single blade razor. The one that does not have like a little strip on it, that little strip of goo, you don't need the strip of goo. You can literally go to the dollar store, get yourself a nice shaving balm and just shave in the direction of the hair, which is typically down. And then that also removes the the dead skin on the on the top layer of their faces. That's why men don't have as many skin problems through their face generally is because they shave and they're getting rid of all of that like extra skin and they just have it better than we do <laughs> um, in that regard. So we're taking it back. They're not the only ones that are allowed to have beautiful, smooth skin. We are doing that too. And the cool thing about that is it aids in the absorption of your products. Because just like having extra skin, that vellus hair, if you're a hairy face friend, um, will get in the way of a, you, your skincare absorbing in properly. Like it's just like an extra layer that the skin hair has to, has to go through. So when you shave that down, your skin is smoother, your foundation goes on smoother, your skincare absorbs better, you exfoliate, X, Y, and Z. So don't knock until you try it, friends. And that was a great question, Debbie. All right, let's start putting on some makeup. So uh, I am using a cream foundation, personally. That's what I like. It looks like this. This is uh, very uh, similar to like our stick foundations from the 90s, sort of making a comeback. Um, uh, this is a brand, uh, by, it's by Lime Life by Alcone. Um, Alcone, if you don't know what the Alcone store is, it's a, it's a store that's uh, over in the, uh, theater district. It's been around since the fifties. They, it's a pro makeup artist store. I, every time I come to the city, I go to the Alcone store and I stock up on stuff. Um, about six years ago, they had the genius idea of taking some of their most purchased items by the pro community and um, packaging it for the consumer. Amazing. So back in the day before, if you wanted, if you were someone that came off the street and wanted to buy a foundation that a makeup artist used on you, you had to buy this whole palette. <laughs> Whereas now I can sell you your color. Um, and it's all products that I was using in my kit anyways, which is kind of why I have aligned with them because it's stuff that I love using on myself and I love using on my clients. Um, that being said, you use what you like. If you like a BBCC cream, go for it. Um, as we age and as our skin gets more texture, I like to stay away from powders. Creams lay on the skin much more beautifully. This creates a really beautiful glow because it's a wax-based makeup. So when you apply it, it has almost like a little bit of a, a beautiful, healthy sheen. Um, the more matte you tend to go with your skincare, the more texture shows. Your, not your skincare, with your makeup, the more texture shows. So um, again, glowing, juicy skin is kind of what's in right now. And I don't see that going away anytime soon because everybody kind of wants that sort of youthful, healthy glow. Okay. Um, I like to put on my foundation first and then conceal after. 
The reason for that is because a lot of times your foundation will do the job of covering up certain little things, certain little concerns. Um, whereas if you sometimes if you do concealer first and then you do your foundation over top, you end up wiping off a lot of that product, right? So you kind of want to be strategic about how you approach the application of your makeup. Okay. Um, so again, any questions you have pop off of mute or head into the chat. So what I'm doing is I'm using my finger because your finger is just as good of a makeup tool as anything else. Okay. Especially for your own personal use. I don't do this with my clients that I'm working on because germs and COVID. Um, but on myself, my tools, my fingers, perfectly good tool because this is a wax base. You almost have to melt it down a little bit. So wherever you apply your makeup first, whether it's with a blush or a brush, excuse me, or with a sponge, wherever you put it down first is going to get the full impact. So I focus my attention in this sort of starburst pattern in the middle of my face, right? Because when you're looking at somebody, this is like the zone that you're looking at, this, this triangle right here. So this is typically where we need the most coverage and then we blend out accordingly. Now, um, I didn't talk about this before I started just putting stripes on my face, but how do you choose the right foundation for you? Okay. Um, a lot of times you will hear, oh, you should match your foundation to your neck or to your jaw. Um, how many have heard like the inside of the arm, right? This is, this is a great tip because again, you can use this at Ulta, Sephora, drugstore, wherever you're buying foundation, because now you know exactly how to match your foundation. Especially if you're a person like me as a person of color who gets very, very fair in the winter and very, very dark in the summer. I need to be able to adjust accordingly. The way that I match my foundation is to my chest or my shoulder, right? Because what happens is we want to make sure that we are creating one cohesive palette, right? And the less clothes we're wearing, the more you want to make sure that that is happening. I just lost a light here. Apologies. Um, if you're wearing turtlenecks all day, then it doesn't matter what the rest of your body looks like. But if your skin is showing, <laughs> if your skin is showing, you want to make sure that everything sort of goes together. So I like to swatch my foundation to my body. There's one, and I'm sort of in between like three colors right now. I just kind of mix a bunch together and make it happen. Um, so this foundation that I'm using is like 50% pigment, where the foundation that you would purchase um, in your department stores are anywhere from 18 to 25% pigment. What does that mean? Why is that important? That means I can use less product. It's going to last me longer, right? The concealers that I carry are 78% pigment. So again, a teeny tiny bit goes a long way. So if you can see here, I swatched three foundations on my chest. I used this one, but I probably should have used that one. You see how it's a, it just fits a little better? Hold on one second. I lost a light and see if I can get it back on. There we go. So we have this guy. That's my summer color. We're not there yet. We have that guy, a little bit too yellow, a little too bright, lost my light again. And then this guy who's a bit more of a, of a perfect fit. Now these go on very opaque. I can make this middle one work because as I blend it out and buff it out, you can't really tell as much that it's not a perfect match. Whereas this guy is definitely going to look very orange if I put it on my skin right now. So as you're at home playing or as you're trying out different foundations and things, now you know what to take into account when pat matching your skin, right? Look, have your shoulder out, have your chest out. Now, the reason why we don't do the neck is because our chin casts a shadow. This area tends to be very, very light. Or if you're a woman of color, this area of the neck where there's a lot of friction happening can be very dark. So there's also that to take into account. That's why the neck isn't great. My face is a bit more pink than my body, which is more olive. So if I were to match my face, my makeup just to the skin on my face, because I tend to get very flushed, it's not going to be the right color either. I'm going to have a tomato face and then like a brown body. Um, so that's why we want to take this into account. If you spend a lot of time outside and this part of your chest tends to be very red, this happens for my like more fair skinned, my outdoorsy ladies and things like that. Then, then you want to pick something that's a little bit more neutral and then we're going to bring that as a blush 
into the face because it would be a very big disconnect if you had red here and were like very neutral through the face. You have to bring that warmth in. You have to introduce that color to the face. So whatever's happening in the body, you want to bring up. So now I see that some of y'all are working, which I love. So now what I'm going to do is start blending this product outward. Again, I'm sort of this, this bouncing motion is called stippling. The benefit to doing this bouncing motion instead of taking a brush and just going like this is because this wipes it all away. You see how it's gone now? Right? So if you're looking for more of a sheer coverage, then absolutely grab your big fluffy brush and just give yourself a nice light layer, right? If you are looking for something that is a bit more medium coverage, which is what you're going to see on this side, then you're going to take your sponge and bounce, bounce, bounce and stipple, 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 right? I can do that exact same motion with a brush that looks like this, which is kind of like the one that Debbie was using. Fill up my brush, bounce, bounce, bounce. And what that does is you're sort of pancaking layers of foundation on top of each other. So this side of my face is much more medium coverage, whereas this side of my face was very sheer because I used this brush and sort of buffed everything out. So whatever is your desired outcome is going to determine what tool you use. Does that make sense? Both look good. Again, it's just a personal preference. So at this point, it's done a pretty good job of concealing some of the, the prob problematic areas where if I wanted to go in and then conceal, then I can either use my finger or use a tool to pick up some of this concealer. Let me get some, let me change my lighting setup a little bit. Here we are. Hi. Whoa, so sorry. Technical difficulties. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Okay, so let's talk about concealers. We pick concealers based on different needs, right? So we can choose a concealer because we would like to not wear as much foundation, just conceal in places where we need. So that's when you're gonna pick a concealer that's a closer match to your skin color. But then we have a reason to conceal to cover darkness. That's, a, that's one major reason to, to conceal, to cover darkness, to sort of highlight, bring things forward. Another reason to conceal is to cover redness. So depending on what it is that you need to cover is going to determine what type of concealer you're reaching for. Darkness is covered best by colors that are more peach, salmon, orange, right? The reason for that is because of color theory. Darkness happens in this sort of uh, violet, blue and blue violet area, especially under the eye. As blood runs through our body and sort of pools in this orbital bone, the blood running through our body is very deep in color. And then this skin is like tissue paper, remember? So as that blood pools, it meets the surface of the skin and creates darkness. For some people, it might look even more red if you have a lighter skin tone or if you have a lot less, um, if you have much thinner skin through this area. For some people it looks green, especially if you are an olive skinned person. Um, it just depends on what your skin tone is on top, right? Um, but because we're using color theory, we're finding its opposite across the color wheel to knock it out. Yellow doesn't do the job as efficiently as an orange does, even though you might be more blue you still want to pick something that has a bit more, do you see how much, how peach, how much peachy, how peachier it, this is? Right. So this is going to do the much better job of covering darkness. Now the same idea happens with redness, right? Say we have rosacea, say we have acne. We're going to use something that's a bit more green to neutralize the red. This is where science meets artistry. <laughs> so green to cover red, orange to cover darkness. The, the, the peachy, salmon-y idea is also great for melasma, 
for um, any type of hyperpigmentation. If you get it through your forehead, if you get the melasma around your under your nose, anything that's got that peach tone to it is going to do a better job. Now, you want to pick something that is relative to your skin tone, right? So if you are fair, then you're going to pick a peach, a light peach that is also fair. If you are a bit deeper of a skin tone, you're going to pick something that has a little bit more of a punch to it, like a salmon. If you are a dark skin tone, if you are a South Asian, something like that, then you're going to pick your oranges, okay? All right. So again, I can use my finger or I can use a brush. When you are concealing underneath the eye and you want to create that sort of highlighted lift, I put a dot right here and a dot over here. And I like to sort of push it upwards because we're trying to create lift, right? Then from there, I can take my sponge, I can grab a fluffy brush, and I'm just pressing that, stippling, not wiping, because we don't want to wipe everything, anything away. And just bouncing that, or if I'm using maybe like a fluffy brush like this, I'm sort of tapping and dragging until I get rid of any points of demarcation. And now not only is the darkness gone, it's also lifted, it's brighter, it's highlighted. That makes sense? Beautiful. And now complexion, the baseline, the canvas, if you will, is ready. Whereas this is a bit more of a natural uh, side. If you're a natural type of gal or person, you can certainly just add a little bit of extra concealer under the eye and just buff everything out until you don't have any lines of demarcation. So again, we're, we're addressing concerns, we're taking care of whatever needs to be taken care of, but we're not going overboard. So there's, there's a marked difference between the two sides. You see that? All right, cool. So I could literally put on some mascara, some eyebrows, throw a mask on and be on my way <laughs> with just this. Uh, but let's talk about creating that really nice dimension, okay? So dimension is all about contrast, right? You can find dimension by um, color, which is what we talk about with highlighting and contouring. Or you can create dimension with texture, meaning matte, something that is flat, that does not shine, does that, that does not bounce light, versus something that has more emollients, your, your, whether it's a face oil or something that is literally shimmery like the highlighters that the girls use these days. So I'm gonna show you uh, quickly, the quick and dirty version of both of those, okay? This is my more medium to full side. This is gonna be my more sheer, um, my more sheer natural side, okay? So Let's see, what do we want to start with? Let's start with contouring, because I always feel like that is the what everybody wants to learn about, right? So on my more full coverage side, I'm going to grab a darker, creamy concealer, okay? On my more light side, you can do something like this. This is everything that you would need as a more natural person just powders, light powders to just sheerly apply things on. But the the idea and the approach is, remains the same, right? So I'm gonna take this creamy concealer onto my finger and I'm gonna start right here at my, this part of the ear is called the tragus, the little triangle that's right here, at the hairline and bring it on down. I love how you're touching your face, getting a feel for your bone structure. That's perfect. So you really do wanna follow your bone structure. Not everybody needs this paint by numbers approach to makeup, right? 
on my sheer to medium side, I'm gonna grab a fluffy brush and I'm gonna do the exact same thing just with a nice neutral powder. Um, a lot of the mistakes that I see with contouring has to do with color choice. Contour is meant to mimic a shade, right? You're creating structure, you're creating a shadow. You don't create a shadow with something that is orangey and reddish. So, sorry. To demonstrate that point, that's the difference between bronzer, bronzer, which lives in this area, these like orangey, darker shades, versus something like this, which is what I used on my skin, which is more taupey, it's more cool, it's gonna create a shadow. Do you see how it just made just a little bit of a divot on my face without being distracting? If I used one of those other tools, one of those other colors, it would be very, very noticeable. Now say that you don't have this color in a bronzer per se. Everybody has some kind of a neutral eyeshadow palette. You can absolutely pull this shade from an eyeshadow. Product is product, makeup is just pigment <laughs> that is either suspended in a liquid, a wax, or a powder. So, paint outside the lines, do your thing. Whereas on this side, I've got much more of a dramatic um, color choice. But as soon as I, let's see, what tool do I wanna choose? I'm gonna use my sponge. I'm gonna keep using the sponge. I can begin to just press and roll this into the skin. And because this sponge already has foundation on it, it's going to make it look more natural. And you see how that just created a little bit of a on that side, okay? And the reason why you wanna keep this short, you noticed how I brought it down the face to about here when I was applying the makeup, because you need space to move the makeup. If you take your, your contour and you bring it all the way down to your mouth, there's nowhere for that product to move, right? So keep it tight. I like to place the product down, place it down first, and then blend. And then that's when you can get it a little bit closer to the set midline of the face. I always like to blend up and back towards the hairline to create that lift. Okay? The next place that I absolutely love to create dimension is right here through my jawline. I'm trying to get rid of all that that's going on under there. So I take my same cream on this side I anchor it behind the ear because we're trying to make it disappear, right? It's very noticeable when something just appears out of nowhere. And do you see how I created that line? So now once I blend that out, it gives a bit more sharpness to the face. And I like to blend mine up a little and then down a little because I don't want it to be super sharp. I'm not trying to become Maleficent, if you've seen Angelina Jolie, but I am sort of trying to just create that really nice bone structure. Same thing with the powder on the other side. I'm grabbing my fluffy brush, anchoring that tool behind my ear, and just taking it down the side of the face in the exact same manner, right? The other places that are typical for contour, I don't, I, these are all optional, is around the forehead. If you have a small forehead, if you don't have a lot of real estate here, then you should not be contouring there, right? Why make it smaller? But if you have a bit more space to work with, you can absolutely create that sort of rounded forehead dimension by placing some product around the forehead. Same thing with the temples. Like this is a natural place where our skin, where our bone structure indents. So placing a little bit of depth in that area is really nice. Ready for a pro, a pro tip? Pro tip, I take my bronzer on a little fluffy brush 
and although we're not really talking about eyes right now, but we are creating dimension on the face, I use that same bronzer on my eyes like an eyeshadow. And then I bring it around and you wanna make like a U around your eyebrow. Boop. And now you've created that little moment of dimension and it all flows together because you're using the exact same color. I can even take this down the nose if we want to carve out the nose a little bit more. Hi, kitty. <laughs> so cute. So it's the same sort of thing. I can place my cream contour around my forehead here and even bring it into the eye area. And now I have an eyeshadow. And then I take my little sponge and blend it all away. Melissa, I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, I noticed that you put your highlighter on the side, but being that I have a larger nose, so I was always told that I should put like a little bit darker on the top of my nose as opposed to the, and put like lighter on the side to like widen my nose as opposed to putting like white on the top or a lighter on the top. Is what is your sense? goal? What are you trying to do with your nose? I would want, I would want to widen it as opposed to making it my have, have a high bridge all the way down. Okay. So for people that have a nose like that, like me, you uh -huh. know, like I don't want it to look more pronounced, like right. taller. I want right. it to look more wider. So you were right. putting some on the side. I was kind of told I should put some on the top, darker on the top. Yeah, you basically. could do like a little bit right here to sort of flatten the nose a little bit. And this is where mm -hmm. you're getting into like really corrective makeup and playing with lights and shadows. Yes. So if you're trying to recede it and you would not want to pull this forward you're exactly like you were told. And you could put just a little extra of your um, your highlighter shade or your, your concealer shade. I have the right, sides right here and that will bring that forward so anything that is light anything that reflects light is going to attract the eye and pull it forward forward to the camera forward to the person anything okay. that is dark anything that is matte and does not reflect light is going to pull back so that's the whole idea around contouring okay right? These are skills that have existed since makeup has existed, right? We like to give RuPaul's Drag Race all the credit for bringing these things to the forefront. Um, but contouring does not have to be um, severe, Yeah. right? We as women, and this is not for every makeup wearer in the world, but as women, we already have that bone structure that men are trying to replicate when they are dressing in drag. Right, so they have to punch it and push it forward a lot more than we have to because that bone structure is already there. But that doesn't mean we have to villainize contouring. We just wanna use it to our advantage, right? So I'm fully contoured. I have created some really nice depth here without it being severe, right? Okay, so we've talked about contouring. Um, highlighting, if you, I like to use again, a cream, I, you just dip into my same concealer and I'm pulling strategically certain parts of the face forward. So this part of the forehead, if you're trying to pull forward your nose, you would do this part of the nose and you can see by just me laying down that product, how it just brings it out, right? This part of the chin. You can go through here and do the top, tops of the cheekbones, right? And if you're getting really glam and going into that world, you can go right underneath that contour that you made and create that sort of stripe right there. And it creates a, a that big contrast of light and dark, okay? So this is again for my more, more glam side of the face. And then all I have to do is tap that in and marry all those products together. Because I'm using the same type of product, a wax-based, 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 I know that they're gonna play well together in the sandbox and they're sort of gonna mix. Right? So now this side of the face has a, just a bit more of that dimension to it. Now, Melissa, oh no, I put on too much, I put on too much bronzer. I put on too much contour. What do I do? 
you take your tool, whatever you use to put on your foundation initially, it naturally will have a little bit of foundation left over, or you can tap just a little bit more and go over top. And what that does is it dials it down and creates a more natural finish. Same goes for blush. You feel like you a little bit like a tin soldier because you put too much blush on. Take a little bit of that foundation and go right over top. And that creates the look of blush coming through the skin because that's what blush is intended to do, right? Give you just a little bit of a uh, very healthy sort of look. We are going to be wrapping up here in just a moment. I apologize, I am a talker. The last thing we're gonna grab here is a little bit of blush. You can use a lipstick. You can use a lip balm. You can use a powder. And I'm gonna take that blush and I'm gonna anchor it right underneath the eye here. Right underneath the eye. That Burt's Bees you're holding is perfect. I'm gonna show you how to use that in just a moment. Yep. So right now the sort of 80s placement of blush is coming back where it's much higher up on the cheekbone. I think that has everything to do with mask wearing because you want sort of everything to happen sort of above the eye. I grabbed a whole lot of blush because I forgot to tap off the excess. So now you're gonna be able to see that sort of skill in motion of using that foundation to sort of tone, tone things down a bit. Um, I think bronzer and blush are interchangeable. So if you like something that's a bit more bronzy versus something that has a pink or a peach to it, you can totally use a bronzer like I demonstrated earlier, the ones that are a bit more red, a bit more orange, right? Um, on this side of the face, my more natural side, I'm gonna show you how I use my balm. I do a little on my lips. And then I take a little bit of that and I tap it onto my cheeks. You can do that with any lipstick, liquid lipstick, traditional lipstick, lip balm. And the nice thing about using a lip balm is that it has a gloss to it. So it's going to naturally highlight. It's like a two in one. And you can even take a little bit of this and throw it on your eyes. Same thing goes for your blush. I love that trick of taking a little bit of blush from your whatever's left over on your brush and putting it on your eyes because it just pulls the eye forward. It gives it a little bit of interest without being able to really put your finger on what it is that you might have done. And now we have a face that's full of dimension, right? Then lastly, if I want to make sure that it doesn't move, that it's not gonna go away, I did my primer earlier with my SPF. We take a little bit of setting spray. And set that in. Let that dry, 16 hours of wear time, it's not gonna move. How do we feel? I see you guys are still working. You look beautiful, wow, Debbie. Amazing. So that is basically what I have for you today. I am so thankful to be here again. Um, our next class, next Sunday, hopefully uh, my vaccine does not take me out for more than 24 hours. Um, but next Sunday, same time, we're going to be starting at this point and going further. We're gonna be talking much more about color. So eyes, brows, lashes, lips, <laughs> all of those questions that you might have. But again, I thought it was very important to split up these topics um, and understanding that skincare is so important. The more natural, the better, because it's absorbed by your body. Um, good makeup starts with good skin. And then also using good quality products for this portion. I don't care what kind of blush you use, what kind of bronzer you use. The powder products, honestly, I could give a rip about. But I wanna make sure that you're using good quality products for your skincare and for your foundational products because your skin is what matters most. I'm so glad you enjoyed the class. Practice, practice, practice. Um, if you have any questions about what kind of brushes to buy, what kind of skincare and makeup to buy, 
Um, I would love for you guys to reach out to me individually. Feel free to messenger me on Facebook or on Instagram. You guys have my information and know where to find me. I have also left a link for you guys in the chat with my link tree. And a lot of the products that I use and that I love are in that link tree. You can directly go to them. Um, and I'm happy to help, you know, help you find the right foundation, the right concealer, the right whatever it is that you need. Um, I am your friendly neighborhood makeup artist and <laughs> the makeup artist in your back pocket. So, yes, Kat. Um, Lisa, uh, is there any way that, um, you know, because I always like to, to try the product before buying. Yes. Is there any way that we can, I mean, I can buy uh, samples and yes. see how it goes with all those uh, skin care products? Absolutely, absolutely. In my link tree, it's I think it's the second or third link. There is a place where you can request a sample. There's two sample sets, one for dry skin and one for oily skin. And it comes with a cleanser, mm -hmm. a mask, and a moisturizer in the sample. And then I'm happy to send out extras. I have some here as well. So contact me. And these samples are on me. I will pay for shipping and all of that. Um, oh, thanks. So please feel free, give it a try. And if you're out there shopping, again, if you're out and about shopping and you try something and you don't like it, take it back to Sephora, take it back to Ulta. You don't have to keep it. Um, you know, th this is not easy <laughs> by any means, especially when you're just learning and your skin is just adjusting. So I am here to serve as you need. All right, guys. Any Thank other questions? Oh, we got one more question. You're welcome. Next week, um, when you do, um, you know, the eyes not it, will you also, cause quite a few of us wear glasses because we're older. Yeah. Could you also put a segment in there, like uh, the, for people who wear glasses, like the difference, Absolutely. maybe things like that. So. Absolutely. And I'll do I'll do something similar. Like we'll start off with a sort of kind of how I had my light to medium side of the face and more full coverage side of the face. I plan to do the same thing. It's going to be very buildable. So we'll start with um, a very simple eye look. And I wear glasses too, guys, so I get it. Um, we'll start with something very simple and then I'll show you how to build for those who are looking to do to learn a bit more dramatic or other techniques for how to do your eyes. Also, too, I mean, I've been a very big fan, and I'm not sure if other people are that um, adventurous, yes. on the new eyeliner that um, connects with magnetic eyelashes. Ooh. Have you tried that? I personally have not, but I know that that is like a huge thing right now. So It's very easy for, especially oh, yeah. for like older women that we can't, you know, like, it's, and I've been using that a lot, and I like that. But um, I also do have like tattoo eyebrows and tattoo eyeliner, but gotcha. just because of, of illnesses that I've lost my eyelashes and eyebrows, yeah, yeah. so it's been very, but I mean, for um, older women, sometimes we can't get, and then at some point you just do it all in one shot, your eyeliner, and then the eye just yeah. connect the eyelashes. So if you could maybe demo that, I'm not sure if you're perfect. That. Yeah. I mean, if you guys want me to show you how to put lashes on, I can. I mean, I'm here to do whatever it is that you guys want to do. Well, so. a lot of people don't want to deal with the glue because they, they lose the little eyelashes that we do have, but I found that that works. But I mean, maybe I think some people might be Absolutely. interested in that. And it's a very, for me, like it, it's a double dose. I put the eyeliner and then I just stick them or the lash the, on yeah that's good it comes off very easily and i don't lose eyelashes. absolutely and lashes are really great um especially as we age our eyes get to be more hooded meaning yes, that me. we can't see the lid as much it's sort of a, you have a heavier brow so having that lash that sort of peaks up and over this area here which i, yeah. I already have as well um you know, it does, it really does make a difference. So okay. uh, you know, when, when the world opens up again, and you're allowed to go places, y'all are going to be ready. Oh, me too. I have uh, I have to dust the public case. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to be ready. All right, ladies. Thank you guys again so much for having me. This was a delight. Um, I appreciate you guys sticking it out with me and I cannot wait to see you guys next week. All right. So we'll start here. So if you want right. to throw all your foundation, everything on beforehand, and then we'll just go, go to town with all the fun color. All right. Thank you. All right, ladies. Thank you so much. Right, thank bye -bye. you. Enjoy bye -bye. your day. You too. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye.